Hey guys, welcome to the video and welcome to the channel. My name is Fred and I am uh, doing videos about my cars and my projects and stuff I do in the shop here on my 90s Japanese sports cars, typically turbocharged stuff, uh, LS swap stuff, things like that. And so I am kind of kicking off a new uh, chapter in the channel here, so to speak, a little bit different from my normal content. I'm going to try to do more talking um, content, more um, probably my face on the camera style stuff like I'm doing right here, and more talking about the cars back there. So a little bit less uh, how-to and technical and step-by-step -step type stuff, and more uh, what you might think of as vlog style content. So this is going to be the first video in a series of that where um, I basically just talk about my projects and show you what I've done and talk about what I'm going to do next. And basically you can kind of get to know the project and see what I've done to it. And you can ask me questions down below if, if you have any questions. Uh, you can tell me how you would do it differently if you want to tell me. You can also tell me uh, how I've done it wrong. So whatever you want to say about it is perfectly fine. But I just thought I would uh, kind of change my style of content a little bit and attempt to do more of the vlog style stuff. So um, I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll just start doing videos about the cars and about the mods that I have already done to the cars. And uh, I'll just show you what I've done and, and uh, basically talk about why I did it and my opinions and thoughts on it. And just see how that kind of content goes and see if anybody's interested in that stuff. So today is day one of that, and I'm really going to try to do a lot more videos. I would like to do a video every single day. That would be my ultimate goal. But honestly, if I can even do one or two videos a week, that would be uh, a big improvement in terms of consistency because I've been pretty inconsistent in upload frequency lately. Um, so in an effort to upload more and provide more content and uh, grow the channel here, I'm going to talk about stuff I've already done instead of always talking about stuff I'm doing right now. So today we're going to talk about the roll cage that I've got in the 240SX back there. I don't know why I keep saying 240SX. It's a 240SX. I, that's like three times I've done that now. So anyway, S13, we'll just say that. Uh, I've got a roll cage in that car, and it is uh, specifically a drag cage. It is not a uh, drift cage. So there's a bunch of different kinds of roll cages out there, and uh, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit. Now, at least I can talk about the uh, the kind of cage I have, the one that I have experience with. Um, so I have a drag focus roll cage, and this roll cage is specifically so you can go to your local track and run, I forget, I think I can run down to like a bottom nine in the quarter mile with this roll cage, faster than this car's ever gone, and probably faster than this car will ever go. So it's enough cage for what I wanted to do with the car. Um, it's not a super mega nice cage. Um, there was no need for that, um, but I'll, I'll flip the camera around and we'll talk about it as I'm showing you what I've got back there. And I'll tell you what I think about uh, driving the car with the roll cage because this is actually a street car and it always was, but when I put it together first over the past few years, the, uh, the focus on the car was to go really, really, really fast in a straight line and go to the racetrack and uh, just kind of hit PBs and see how fast I could make this thing go reasonably. And uh, so that was what the car was really kind of built for, but it was always a street car. So uh, my experience with it is how to have a roll cage and be a street car. I think most of you guys probably are street teeing your cars, even your fast cars and your, your track-ish cars are probably street cars at least some of the time too, or at least you want them to be, I think. So I've got some experience on how to live with a roll cage and what I like and dislike and what I would probably do different next time. So I'll talk about some of those things as I show you uh, the cage install. Also, I'm a real big proponent of full interior, and I, I hate stripped out interiors. I hate stripped cars. I don't even like the back seat to be stripped out on my cars. I like everything possible to still be there, if at all possible. So uh, whenever I put that thing in, the roll cage, it was a big focus of mine to make all the interior panels go back in um, and try to make this thing as, as complete and still feel like a street car as possible. So I'll show you how I did that in a couple of spots there and uh, and um, show you what kind of compromises I had to make and so forth. Um, so yeah, I think that covers it. So let's flip the camera around and we'll go inside the car and I'll show you what we're working with. Okay, so first up you can see that I've got door bars here that come in and go down like that. Uh, I think that's a little bit non-typical. Uh, a lot of times you'll see them come up high up here and if you're racing competitively, that is supposed to come up, uh, I think, higher than your elbow, between your elbow and your shoulder. So you could have a problem at the track, or I could have a problem at the track with this, but I never have. Um, <coughs> but uh, technically, that door bar is probably a little bit low on the backside. But uh, my focus was more on making it uh, comfortable and easy to get in and out of than anything else. And uh, this has worked out really, really well. So 
This cage was made by a guy named, uh, I think it's Kevin Searcy, if I remember his name right. Um, and he's in some of the groups on Facebook. And he has a company down in Texas. And they do all sorts of drift car parts, S13, S14 stuff. I don't really know exactly what all they do, but I know that they do uh, pre-bent roll cages for S chassis. And he was just a few hours south of me and close to some of my family down there. So I took a, a New Year's uh, weekend trip down and picked it up. Um, his company name is on the roll cage back here. Uh, if you can read that, turn five is that what this is yeah turn five fabrication so turn five fabrication bent this up for me and then i did the whole install um on the roll cage so i don't have a, a tubing bender and i've never built a roll cage from scratch and wasn't really interested in learning how so i bought the prevent kit from him and uh, installed it so it all went pretty well uh, my first install of a roll cage so i did some um, things I probably shouldn't have done and kind of didn't do as good of a job on certain areas as I could have done. But that's all just par for the course and how it goes when you build cars. Things don't always come out perfect. For example, here uh, you can see that I had to cut into my speaker pod right there for clearance for the door bar. And I fully intend to finish that out, by the way. Um, but I did just cut that so it would clear. And then I had to cut it right here for the door bar to clear here which is not a problem, it's just that uh, on the driver's side it did not have to do either of those things. So I had to cut nothing at all on the driver's side bar over there. Um, and it's just the way the thing went together. Um, I probably could have got it to rotate away from the door a little bit, maybe, and not had to do that, but the way it was notched here and back here, this is where it wanted to sit. So I just went with its most natural sitting. And then I realized later that the, the door panel wouldn't fit on this side, so I had to trim it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the driver's side didn't need that. So, um, that's just one of those things that you get into when you build these cars and do roll cages is clearance for door panels. So that's something to think about. If I were to do this again, I would, um, definitely ask the guy to make the door bars like high clearance. So that would probably bend in a little bit and then come back. Um, that would prevent this, I think. But that actually brings me to a better point, which is, removable door bars. You can actually have these things built so that this entire door bar either swings out on a hinge or that the entire bar is just removable with pins. So they have these special fittings back here and back here where a pin just drops in and then this door bar can actually just come out. So that is one thing I would definitely do different if I were to do this over again is I would make the driver's side door bar completely removable and I wouldn't even bother doing that on the passenger side because it's so rare that I even have a passenger in here. And when I do have one in here, they just climb over it and it's not that big a deal. But since I'm coming in and out of that driver's side all the time, I do have to step over the bar and kind of lower myself down into the seat. And that does get a little bit old. It hasn't bothered me that much, but um, being that it is primarily a streetcar, it would be nice to not have to do that. So... That's one ch change that I would definitely make is I would make that driver's door bar over there removable. So that's something to think about um, if you're caging up your streetcar. Um, so what else? So the door bar comes down here and ties into the, the main front bar there. And then there's a weld plate on the bottom. And then that goes up through the dash and comes up right here. And so this is the next issue on a roll cage is how the heck are you going to like get your dash to install and make it look nice? And I haven't exactly got it to look nice yet, but I do have it installed, so I guess I can speak on that. Um, so you can see what I did there was just cut a big old U-shaped uh, notch out of the dash itself, and I cut that with a die grinder in like a really coarse die grinder bit, and I just ground it and ground it and ground it and ground it until it fit, and I just about a million times installed the dash, nope, not enough, grind it some more, install the dash, nope, not enough, grind it some more, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until you get it on both sides. And then it looks like this from the outside. And so, um, honestly, that's been good enough for me. It doesn't really bother me that much that it's a little bit rough. But um, I would like to be a little bit nicer. I always thought that I would come in here and build plates that would kind of either just enclose that part or perhaps something that would actually wrap all the way around and really trim this out. But I've never really come to a good like thought and idea on how to do that. I don't really know what material to use. Um, some sort of black, like ABS plastic might work. Um, but then you got to figure out how to hold it down. Um, 
Maybe I could use Velcro just to just to hold it down. That, that might be an idea. Maybe you guys have some th thoughts on that. Um, the driver's side looks like this right here. Basically the exact same thing. Um, so anyway, that was an area of the install that I was really nervous about. I didn't know how that really got done. And I just had to figure it out on the fly. And that's what I came up with. Just the most obvious thing really in the world, which is just cut a big U-shaped channel header dash on both sides. And um, yeah, it's worked out and it's been perfectly fine. Um, so what else? So we've got the uh, kind of header bar here that goes across and you can see my questionable welds. Uh, we'll probably talk about welding here in a second. And it comes across and uh, connects over there, of course. And then I have no, or for the longest time, I had no rear view mirror because that thing got in the way of the stock rear view mirror. So uh, I wanted to go to 2 con here, which is actually, I got this there, 2 con in Fayetteville. If you get a chance, go to 2 con next year. You'll see me there. Um, but I wanted to go to 2 con this year and do the cruise, and so I really needed a rearview mirror uh, because I was going to be driving fast on curvy roads, and I just wanted a rearview mirror for all the normal reasons. So I went to Amazon and found out that you can buy these uh, suction cup rearview mirrors, and they're super cheap. It was like, I don't know, this thing might have been like $10. And uh, it holds so good that I stuck it on, and that's been months ago, and it's never come off. So it works really, really well. It does vibrate a little bit. It's not... A perfect mirror solution it does have a little fine vibration to it and you can see it and it's a little bit annoying but I don't really know how to get around that so for now this was a super quick order it on Amazon solution that worked out really really well and I'm happy with that um, I did lose my visors also my visors can't install anymore up here because this bar is in the way of where they mount I do not have a solution for that yet um, and I actually don't think I'm gonna even worry about it I don't really want a solution. I don't need visors that much. Rarely am I driving into the sunset, I guess. Um, but if I was a lot, I suppose I would probably just do a tent strip right here. Maybe have a tent strip come down about six inches and just let that be that, I guess. I don't know. Maybe you guys have some ideas. Are there visors that attach to the roll cage maybe or something? Uh, let me know on that. Um, I think, yeah, we'll either talk about the welding next or we'll talk about the rear. Yeah, I think I'll uh, throw the seats forward and we'll talk about the rear real quick. Hold on. Okay, so you can kind of get an idea of how the cage comes together back here. And you can see where I have split the side panel here and notched it out for the, the uh, cage bar to come down through. And you can see, hopefully you can see. Let me climb in here real quick, sorry. There we go. Um, you can see how it was notched out up here and back here. It had to be cut in those angles and then those ways so that the whole panel could actually be installed and kind of slid into place. And it split, if I remember right, all the way into two pieces. So this front half is one piece and the back half is one piece. I think, yeah, and then you can see the door bar comes back and goes in through there and welds into this, this up right here. Um, so yeah, that's the some of the trimming that I had to do to make the side panels work um, But that was really important to me to get that done so that I could still run the side panels And have the most factory look that I could figure out how to get and then the rear seat still fits like stock because the The door bars come down outside the seat area instead of like down through the seat area some cages will come down and the uh, Not door bar, but yeah door bar and the vertical will come down like right in here and make the seat kind of impossible to install And I didn't want that um, so you can see where this bar comes down at an angle and kind of pushes against the seat, but not really a problem. The seat still installs just fine. And you can see kind of some of the notching and trimming that had to be done over here to get this to work. Um, even had to cut a circle out there for that bar to pass down through, just kind of poked in just a little bit. And back here, you get another look at the notch that had to be made there. And then I, you probably can't see down in there, but there is a steel plate welded down to the inner wheel tub. And that's what this bar has to weld to. Um, so yeah, that kind of gives you an idea of the basic layout of the cage. Um, and it is a basic cage. It's nothing fancy. It's certainly not a drift competition spec cage. And it's not a, a fancy drag racing cage where you can go run sevens or sixes or whatever. But again, I was not wanting to do any of those things with this cage. I literally just installed this cage so that I could go back to my local drag strip because I ran too fast and they kicked me out and they said, man, you got to have a roll bar before you come back. And 
I wanted to keep going and make the car faster. And so um, I had to do the cage so I could keep running. Um, and it was kind of a bummer because I didn't even really want a cage in the car. Um, but I did want to keep running. So I went ahead and did the cage. And also I wanted the experience of having, you know, installing a cage. I thought it'd be cool to know how to do it. And it was. It was a lot of work. But um, it was pretty fun. If you can weld, you can make this happen. So let's talk about the welding. Um, so welding... So welding is a huge deal when it comes to roll cages. In my opinion, uh, the welding is kind of one of the biggest uh, factors in how nice the cage is going to be when it's all said and done is how nice the welding is. Um, so all the welds that were pre-done by the guy who built this are really good because that's what he does every day. And then all the welds that I did were not so nice because I don't weld every day. Also, I had to use a MIG welder for most of this, and I'm super inexperienced on MIG welding. I have quite a bit of experience on TIG welding, so I'm kind of backwards. Most guys start MIG and go TIG, I think. I started TIG and then literally bought a MIG welder for this project. So some of the first MIG welds I had basically ever done, at least as an adult, were on this roll cage, which is not ideal. You really want to be a pretty fluent welder before you weld on a roll cage. I mean, that's really... <laughs> but this is just not the way it worked out for me. And so I just jumped right in and did my own welds. And they're not the nicest. Um, I don't think any of them are structurally a problem. Uh, they're just a little bit ugly to look at. But yeah, so welding is one of the big factors on uh, getting your roll cage done. Who's going to do the welding? Are they going to take it? Are they going to make it? And are they good at what they do? So if you want your car to be more valuable in the end, which I think we all do, or if that's a concern for you, uh, get somebody to weld it for you. Because if you go to sell your car, uh, the welds are, welds are just one thing that the buyer can look at and, and say, yeah, that's nice, or no, that's not nice. If they know anything about welding, they'll be able to look at the welds and instantly know if they're nice or not. If they don't know about welding, then who cares, right? But uh, a lot of the people that want to buy a car with a cage in it know about cages, and they know about competition, and they know about roll cages, and they know about welding, and they want the thing to look nice. Another thing to think about is the material you have the cage made out of. Uh, these are all just basic steel. I think it's just mild steel. It's just roll. It's just whatever they make roll cages out of the low end stuff. Uh, you can step up to chromoly, I think it's called, and it's a lot lighter, but it's just a. It's as strong, but it's lighter, um, and that's really good if you are again if you're a competition car and weight really matters. Do that. If you're a street car, don't waste your time unless you want the nicest cage ever, and then do it chromoly, and that's totally cool. But uh, m mostly your cage is probably going to end up being steel like mine, and so. Anyway, yeah, I think that pretty much covers the majority of it. Um, removable door bar, I think, was something I would definitely do. And then other than that, everything else, to be honest with you guys, there's really no downsides to having a roll cage in your streetcar um, as far as functionality, other, th other than the things I covered in the video. There is a safety component to all this, though. Um, on the street, you're not wearing a helmet, so if you are in a wreck or a fender bender or something and your head crashes up against one of these bars, that's not going to be a good time, so... Some guys are very, very serious about that, and they're like, you should absolutely not have a roll cage in a street car. And I don't disagree with them, strictly speaking. You know, they're, they're basically right about that. <clears throat> but then again, what are you going to do? you got to have a roll cage in your street car if you want to go a certain speed, so everybody just does it anyway and hopes for the best. And as far as I know, there's no laws around it. So guys just do it and, and get away with it. I don't know anybody who's hurt themselves in a roll cage in a street accident. I'm sure it's happened somewhere in the past to somebody, but it is one thing to think about. If your car is 99.999% street, maybe don't get a roll cage. Like, honestly, if I could do it all over again, this is my advice to you. If you want a straight line, fast speed car, and that's the intent of your project to see how fast I can go in a straight line, drag strip is requiring a roll cage. What I would probably do differently now is I'd buy a draggy, and I would just do all my tuning on the street, and I wouldn't even go to the drag strip. Uh, that's my honest, my honest opinion. The draggy is such a good device. And I guess you guys probably know what a draggy is by now. I think everybody does. It's a little GPS box that you just set on your dash or in your console and it can, connects to your phone. And it records your run. And you can do a straight line run anywhere you have a straight flat level road. You can do a, a run and you can measure your eighth mile and your quarter mile and your zero to 60 and all that. And it's so incredibly accurate that there's really no point to go back to a racetrack anymore if your intention is just to beat your own previous best and go faster than you went last time. 
which was my whole point, then just do draggy stuff and forget the roll cage. Um, so that's my advice and my opinion. And if I do another car similar to this in the future, that's what I'm going to do. I'm probably not even going to go to the track, really any. I'll just find a long, straight, flat level road and I'll just do draggy runs and I'll get my data there and get my back-to-back -back runs and make changes and raise the boost and run again. And I'll forget the roll cage. Um, now, of course, the roll cage is there for safety in case you roll over and I would not have a roll cage in that case. So the, it is a trade-off even in that situation. I mean, the roll cage in theory, you want it there if you're making really fast draggy runs on an older car. Um, on newer cars, I think it's 2014 and newer. Even the NHRA now doesn't require a roll cage to go real fast. I forget how fast you can go now and you don't even have to have a roll cage anymore because the newer cars are so well built for rollover protection. So that's another element in this whole conversation is, is your car old like mine and all the 90s stuff or is it a modern car? If it's a modern car, forget the roll cage altogether probably. Um, so that's something to think about in this conversation. But of course, I just have these old cars, so they're pretty flimsy when you crash them anyway. So um, I really did need the roll cage in this situation. But uh, let me know uh, what you guys think. Um, give me your thoughts on the roll cage. Let me know how you did it. And if you have any questions or opinions or input or stuff you think I should have done different, or if you have any questions about what I did, let me know down below in the comments. I like to interact with you guys in the comments section whenever I can. Give me a sub on this, guys, if you enjoy this kind of content. I'm going to do more walk-arounds and we're talking about the specific areas uh, of my cars. By the way, I should have mentioned it, this is an LS swap with a T56 transmission. Uh, it's not turbocharged currently, but it is turbo. It's turbo, but it's not turbo. So I ran it turbocharged, ran a 980 at 142 in the, in the quarter mile. And uh, just this year, I took the turbo off of it and ran all summer non-turbo. So here's the turbo for it. Uh, it's a G42. So if you're interested in that car and want more videos, about that or want to see more of my stuff or just uh, kind of want to follow along give me a sub guys i really appreciate it and again i'm going to try to make more content kind of more conversational style stuff like this uh, more walk arounds and things so if you enjoy that kind of stuff give me a sub if not that's totally cool too guys otherwise i will catch you guys on the next one